This is a uh, telescoping fiberglass mask. Uh, they're becoming very popular for portable antennas. Uh, this one will extend out to 32 feet, roughly 10 meters, and collapses to 46 inches, just uh, a little over one meter in length. And uh, they are extended this way to friction fit here between sections. So uh, it's possible to uh, connect an end fed antenna or support a uh, blink dipole in an inverted V. So they're uh, very handy. But of course I can't stand here and hold this all day. So we need some way to support it uh, when there's no trees around or anything like that that we might lean it against or whatever. So let's uh, talk about a way to support a fiberglass mass uh, for supporting an antenna. This is a piece of uh, two inch nominal diameter uh, PVC pipe. And the two inch is actually the inside diameter. Actually, it, the inside diameter of pipe is just slightly larger than its uh, nominal uh, dimension. So I picked this because this will fit inside of it. So now I have a way of holding uh, the fiberglass mask. Uh, but again, I can't stand here and hold it all day. So uh, we need uh, something else to make this work. Now this has a spike at the bottom so that the bottom uh, will stay where you put it. And then this is a piece of thin wall conduit. It comes in 10 foot lengths. So I bought two pieces and cut them in half. So I have four of these that are five foot long. And the ends have been flattened. I uh, did that in a vise. The ends have been flattened. I did that in a vise. Uh, it was a rather sturdy vise, and I required using a piece of pipe on the handle to really get some torque. So uh, if you're going to do this, you'll need a, a hefty vise or a hydraulic press. So I drilled a hole here. And uh, I used to take these wing nuts off to put this on, and then I got the idea of cutting a notch so that the wing nuts could stay in place. I have a uh, bubble level here, so I can move things to get this pretty vertical. Sometimes vertical is hard to judge if you're on a slope of some kind.
Well, these uh, stakes are made out of rebar, and uh, I made them pretty long. You never know what the ground's going to be like. If it's soft and uh, loose, uh, you may put them in at full length, but here the soil's fairly firm. So I don't need to put them in very far. Okay, now I don't have to hold things together anymore. So I'll uh, show you some details of the uh, design here. Well, the camera wasn't aimed very well before. I'm just uh, videoing with my cell phone, and on a bright sunny day, I can't see the screen. But uh, here's details of how the stakes are pounded in. You can see they are not in very far in this uh, firm soil. Now, here's the uh, level that I mentioned. And uh, I think you can see the wire running around here connecting all these stakes together. And uh, that's going to be the counterpoise when this is an N-fed antenna. Also, I have two wires running down the uh, length and connecting uh, to that metal stake that you saw on the end. And uh, also there's some weep holes drilled down there in case it uh, rains while you have this thing set up. You don't want this to uh, fill up with water. So that's the uh, basic idea behind this thing and uh, in the next video I'll show you uh, how I uh, made this into an N-fed antenna. Uh, by the way, uh, if uh, you make the N-fed with like the 49 to 1 uh, uh, ballon or unun I guess, uh, your counterpoise will be your coax unless you use a common mode choke. And then uh, if you have a common mode choke in, in series with your coax, then the coax is no longer the counterpoise and you can make something else your counterpoise. And in this case, I'm going to make my base here the counterpoise for my in-fed vertical. And uh, I'll show uh, my NFED vertical in the next uh, video. Okay, I'm in the uh, conduit and pipe section of Menards. And uh, rigid conduit is basically pipe. It's thick wall. The uh, conduit that's called EMT is thin wall. And what I used was the half-inch thin wall. You can see the wall is not thick like pipe. So that makes it possible to smash it in the vise. This is the vise that I used to uh, flatten the ends of the electrical conduit. And to get enough torque, I actually uh, had to extend the handle here with a piece of pipe. So uh, I don't think some of the smaller vices would work uh, for doing this. Now here's uh, 
some details on the ends of the, the uh, PVC pipe that holds the fiberglass uh, mast. And that's, uh, the spike is made out of regular all thread. This is 3 8 inch all thread, um, 16 threads per inch. So there's a nut on the inside of this pipe cap uh, attached to the stud and one on the outside. Now my connection wires go through here so that they're uh, and attach on the inside so that they're not exposed to being jammed into the dirt all the time. Also there's weep poles here in the bottom to let any rainwater out that uh, might accumulate. Okay, at the top end, there's a coupling, and the reason for the coupling is to make room for the bolt heads. If uh, they were just sticking through the uh, pipe itself, uh, they would interfere with the fiberglass mast. And the uh, level was just uh, attached with a piece of aluminum angle that's been cut down to look a little better and not have sharp corners. Now as you'll see on uh, my video for the uh, half-wave fed antenna. I needed to raise the mast up a little higher, so I made this. Uh, this is standard one-inch PVC pipe with caps on each end, and uh, it's about seven inches long, and it fits inside the other PVC pipe. And in that way, I can raise up the mast so I can attach my unon to it. Well, if you got any good ideas from this video, you could help by uh, giving us a thumbs up. Click on that like button. And uh, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next video where I show you how to use your telescoping mask and support uh, or an NFED uh, half-wave antenna that's truly effective.